Cope was released August 5th, and despite his oath of allegiance to not again take sides, the impetuous, headstrong Wesley Cope did just that. He first could rest in the Shepherdstown area before rejoining until as late as October 17, 1862, when the Federal Army crossed into Virginia in force. His 2nd Virginia Regiment, due to circumstances, had almost no direct combat throughout September and October. Snyder, Arthur, and the other Shepherdstown men could leave their Bunker Hill encampment and go 20 miles to home. But 5,000 wounded soldiers from the carnage along Antietam Creek in Maryland were brought into Shepherdstown in mid-September. Hoffman's wagon maker shop on Princess Street was a hospital where one soldier refused to have his foot amputated until another surgeon intervened and succeeded in working free the embedded ball. H.L. Snyder wrote in his newspaper September 22, 1927, how his mother hurried to get some green bean stew to a gravely wounded young soldier from Georgia in the Presbyterian Church. He died moments before she returned with the soup he begged for. The 87th Pennsylvania Regiment, as part of the 8th Army Corps under the command of General R.H. Milroy, occupied the fortifications just outside of Winchester, Virginia. There they were assaulted by superior numbers of Confederate forces under General Jubal Early, and a fierce battle ensued. Outnumbered and low on rations and ammunition, Milroy decided to withdraw and under cover of darkness, the men evacuated the fortifications. Less than five miles from Winchester, the Federal forces encountered the Virginians en masse near the railroad tracks at Carter's Woods or Stevenson's Depot, with the Second Virginia taking a lead role. During the fierce fighting that followed, Corporal Johnston Skelly of Company F fell mortally wounded. Wesley Culp visited Skelly, his neighbor, once in Gettysburg after the battle. Mortally wounded, Skelly asked Culp to take a letter. Should his regiment ever come near Gettysburg and deliver the letter to his fiancée, Jenny Wade? He knew he could die and Wesley tucked the letter into his pocket. As the Battle of Gettysburg began, Jenny Wade and her mother moved from their home at 548 Baltimore Street to her sister's at 528 Baltimore Street. As July 2nd morphed in the night into July 3rd, some of the 2nd Virginia and Culp's friends were hunkered down behind boulders waiting for developments near McAllister's Woods and Rocky Creek. Jenny Wade was up early, making more bread for the soldiers, bent over a dough for biscuits near a door. A stray bullet crashed through at doorknob high with an upwards trajectory hitting Jenny Wade in the shoulder blade and it then entered her chest. According to Cindy L. Small in her exhaustively researched book, The Jenny Wade Story, these events killed 20-year-old Jenny Wade, John Skelly's fiance. Jenny wasn't at her home, and Cope, on a daring visit to his sister Julia in town, couldn't find her to deliver the letter. Much later, McClure Moeller wrote in the Shepherdstown Register July 6, 1922. Culp was in the 2nd Virginia Regiment and found himself fighting on the land which had been in the possession of the Culp family for years and which at the time of the battle belonged to his uncle. At this particular spot, the fight was terrifically hot 
and bullets and shells caused the men to seek such shelter as they could find. In this vicinity, there were great boulders of rock of which the men took advantage. According to Harry W. Fonts in his book about Culp's Hill, Company B of the 2nd Virginia saw very little fighting, spending much of their time annoying federal units in the McAllister Woods from a vantage point close to Rocky Creek. In fact, John Wesley Culp was, of the entire 2nd Virginia Regiment, the only fatality at Gettysburg. He died of a momentary lapse in judgment. He wouldn't listen. Moeller continues, They were well fortified as long as they did not expose themselves. It happened that Wesley Culp and John Snyder and William Arthur were side by side during this fight. Culp, becoming restless, wanted to look over the edge of the rock to see what was going on. His companions warned him not do so, that the bullets were flying so fast that it meant certain death to peep over the rocks. Wesley said, well, I'll just look once anyhow. He raised up and peered over in a moment or two. Mr. Snyder called to him, but he did not answer. Mr. Snyder took hold of him and pulled him back, but it was the body of a dead man. The moment he had looked over the top, a bullet had pierced his forehead. With Wesley Culp and Jenny Wade, both released from earthly chains by July 4th, Jack Skelly also died in Winchester on July 12th. John Snyder would die June 1st in the following year after the Spotsylvania battle. Rachel Snyder, after frantic letters seeking his whereabouts, raced to be with him. She experienced a painful replay of her missed appointment with the Georgia soldier waiting for her stew. They had pulled the sheet over her husband an hour before she walked in the door, John, weakening, had been saying before he died, Has she come? Has she come? Cared for exceptionally well by federal nurses, they gave her a letter taken from John's voice. It began, My dear wife, on the morning of the 12th of May, after almost incessant fighting and marching for eight days, I was seriously wounded. I was left on the ground where I lay for 30 hours in the rain. I was then taken to the rear of the federal troops the next day, who gave me nourishment and warmed me up as well as they could. He closed by writing, And now, my dearest wife, the sorest trial comes. Must I say farewell to you? Yes. I never expect to see you again on earth, but I hope to meet you in a better land, never again to be torn from your embrace. Farewell, farewell to all. My trust is in God. William Arthur was captured May 12th at Spotsylvania, spent 10 months at Point Lookout, then Elmira Prison in upstate New York. He managed to come home alive and lived out the balance of his life as a familiar face on the streets and farm fields of his Shepherdstown, dying at the ripe and mellow age of 77.